Now today we're going to continue some sensor work on the Honda S2000 and just like I mentioned last week when we did the map sensor my plan is just to do a number of these sensor videos as we wait for a couple of things to get done on the car. Number one is the top and that's actually getting done next week that will be a Robbins cloth top with glass window so really excited for that I'll show you what that looks like when it's done. Number two are the leathers. Now this is really interesting you guys may enjoy this the seat, the, the leathers themselves, not the labor, just to get the leathers are roughly $800. Okay, $750, $800. And I emailed a number of different uh, shops in terms of what does it cost for you to do the work. And one shop got back to me. I'm not even making this up. One shop said $1,500 in labor per seat. So I'm going to do something different with the seats, which you'll see next week probably. And then the valve cover. Still waiting on the valve cover to come back from powder coating. It's been a month. The gentleman promised me one month. If I don't see it by the end of the week, I'm going to pay him a visit. And if, it, if it's not ready, I'm just bringing my business elsewhere. That simple. And then lastly is the front bumper. Fortunately, I do have a bumper uh, that I can at least slap on, take it to a body shop, and then let them do what they have to do. Lastly, before we begin, the temperature sensor, by the way, incredibly easy to test, will take you less than one minute, and I'll show you that in a second. But at the end of the video, I just need some help from any S2000 owner, specifically AP1 owners, 2000 to 2003. Need some feedback, so if, uh, if you guys stick around, I would love to hear uh, your thoughts on something. Let's go. Now, just like the MAP sensor, which lives right here, the intake air temp sensor is held on by two Phillips size fasteners, okay? Now the thing with these fasteners is they can strip incredibly easily if you don't remove it the right way. Let's put it that way. In other words, you want to make sure you have a, a really firm grip on these two fasteners. So this is just a uh, 10 inch, this is a Craftsman, but any high quality tool will work. And I'm going to put a lot of pressure on these two fasteners. Let me show you how. Now my plan is just to place a lot of weight on those two fasteners. Okay, so something like this, where I'm leaning over and I'm pressing really, really hard with my left palm and I'll turn with my right because I'm a righty. And slowly, they do break loose. Let me bring you in for a close up. Okay, so I'm just pressing down very, very hard. There we go, really, really hard. As you can see, this one is loose. Same with the other side. And then there you go. And be careful when you remove these because you don't want to drop them, obviously. Okay, so there's your sensor. Now, if you're familiar with my videos, you probably know what I'm going to show, and that's a digital multimeter. If you've never used one of these, incredibly easy to use, inexpensive. This is $20 off Amazon. I'll include a link in the description box below if you need one. And then, just two wires with alligator clips on the ends. Okay, super, super simple. Let me just line this up. Now, inside the center, you have two small prongs. So all that I'm doing is taking one prong, I'm sorry, one uh, alligator clip, placing it on top, and then there's a boot. So I'm going to press down the boot, okay? And that will protect that connection, okay? Grab the other wire, place it on the other prong. Place this down here, and then we have two leads to the multimeter, a black and a red. Just hook them up to the leads. And then, all that we need is something to heat this up. You can use, uh, I've done it over a stove in the past with just heating up water. Your best bet, if you have one, a hair dryer. So I have the hair dryer, and what I want to first see is an ohms reading. That is the omega symbol on the multimeter. Okay, right here. So you just place it on this. You should see a reading. If you don't, your sensor is shot. I mean, that's one thing right off the bat. But we do see a reading. And now I'm going to apply heat to the sensor, and this value should change. So here we go. 
warm this up here. It's already lowering. Here we go. See the difference? Immediately, you see a change in the value. Now, once I remove the heat, it should go back up. There you go. So, this sensor is in perfectly fine shape. One more time. And then we'll jump over to the vehicle and I'll show you how you could do this with a scan tool. And if you get confused on how this reinstalls, you want this little notch to be on top so the harness connector clicks into it. But I tell you, I cannot wait to get this car going. I'm very, very excited. It's just waiting and waiting and waiting. I've had the car for like three months and I just want to get this thing going. So, but in the meantime, at least we can get these sensor videos done. So I suppose that's a, a positive. Not too tight, it's a plastic body. Plug this back in, let's jump over. Make sure it clicks like that. Okay, now let's jump over to the inside. And this is what the back currently looks like. I actually removed the stock window, which is vinyl on these early cars. Because I was trying to get a glass top, that's a whole other story, maybe for another day, we'll visit that. Anyway, so you got anything else with cars when you love them? There's a lot to learn. Whoops, a lot to learn. Now, this is just a very, very basic scan tool. Let me turn off the lights so I don't blind myself. Hold on. Very, very basic scan tool. Again, I'll have links in the description box below. This is 40 bucks, guys. $40 scan tool. You can read codes, live data, which is what we need. Okay, just turn the ignition key on. Let me show you how this hooks up if you're not familiar with these. Now for the 2000 and 2001 model year, the port is on the passenger side. 2002 moves over to the driver's side, okay? So as you can see, I have my scan tool hooked up. Ignition key is turned on. You're not starting the car. Okay, so what you want is data stream and you want to find the intake air temp sensor and see what the value or the reading is. Intake air temp. And I have a reading of 10C, which tells me it's working fine as we know, but let me show you how you can quickly, probably the quickest way to see if this is working right. So really two things come to mind. Number one, just disconnect it. Okay, let's go back in the car. Again, data stream, and now we should see a completely different value. And then there's one more thing I'll show you. Okay, so now it's minus 40C. So that tells us the wiring is good, and as we know, the sensor is fine. Now, let me show you one more thing. So I'm just reconnecting the sensor. And if the engine is cold, the intake air temp sensor and the coolant sensor should be exactly the same, only if the engine is cold, okay? And then once again, we're at data stream and we need to find the engine coolant temperature sensor and again, the intake air temp sensor. And that's a great thing about these scan tools. You can choose whatever the heck you want. And that's why I like this one. It's so easy to use and it's 40 bucks. It's not touch screen, so it's less to go wrong. I'm all for simplistic, simplicity. Intake air temp sensor, and there we go. They're pretty much right on the money. They match each other for the most part. And that tells us everything is working correctly. But really the easiest way in my mind, you could do that very quickly, but just removing it, hair dryer, that's it, easy. Ah, uh, coffee. Okay, I'll make this rather quick, and this is actually the first video I've ever asked for help. So I would love any feedback here regarding the valve retainers, and you probably already guessed if you're an AP1 owner. So that's 2000 through 2003 model years. Have you replaced the valve retainers? Were they cracked? And what was the mileage on your vehicle? And uh, I'm, I would really love to see the feedback on this. And lastly, would you want to see a video on how to replace valve retainers? Now, there are two very good videos on how to do this. One is Speed Academy. The other one, I forget 
the channel, but the guy's very knowledgeable in the S2000s. He does, does a really good job showing how he did it. The only reason why I'm considering is because I tend, when I shoot a video, it's multiple angles, and I shoot it as if you've never held a wrench in your hand. So I try to explain things very, very simplistically. Although these videos are perfectly fine for even a first timer. Uh, it's just, if you're like me, I like to watch multiple videos on the same subject to get different ideas. So, uh, any feedback I would love, please. I would love to hear what you guys have to say. And um, that's really it. So, thank you for watching. And uh, I'll see you soon.